You know, I must like pain. I must like being bullied and fried up in the comment section. Now, I have no idea why I'm back again power scaling on the internet, but here we are again, talking about the big three once more. Hey, at least we don't have the dislike button anymore, right? Happy New Year. What's up, YouTube? Charisma here, and uh, yeah, consider this a sequel, I guess, to the Naruto vs. Luffy vs. Ichigo video from last year, this time instead being a battle of the sensei. Standing in one corner, we have the extremely tactful, somewhat of a closet pervert, child prodigy masked up way before pandemics were cool, former Hokage and professor of teamwork, Kakashi Hatake. And then the opposite corner, we have the lackadaisical and also slightly pervy, but incredibly clever and highly knowledgeable former captain of the Gote 13's 12th division turned borderline creepy candy store owner, Kisuke Urahara. I wanted to include Rayleigh here to, you know, keep it consistent, a three-way battle of sorts, but we honestly just don't know enough about his full battle prowess just yet, prime or present. Once we see more of the Raja Pirates in action, maybe we can revisit this sometime in the future. And also, yeah, I know a lot of folks consider Jiraiya to be Naruto's main sensei, but let's be real, Kakashi is a way better matchup against someone like Kisuke. I think I might as well keep the same format as last time too. That seemed to work pretty well. So first I will be analyzing the strength, speed, stamina, and arsenal for each of these characters individually. Then afterwards, I'll dissect how I think a battle between the two would play out to the best of my ability, of course. Once again, like with every Bleach cross-verse scenario, I just refuse to take the easy way out and have Kakashi not be able to see Kisuke. Once again, for the people in the back, Literally, characters in Naruto can see and interact with spirits. Kakashi had a full-on conversation with the Sage of the Six Paths in the real world, in front of everybody towards the end of the series. This dude's been dead for centuries, and he also wasn't an Edo Tensei body. On top of that, even basic humans like Ichigo's friends could see hollows, although only about as clearly as I can see my hand in front of my face on a really drunk night. And yeah, I don't see why Child Prodigy, I was a Jonin at the age of 12, Kakashi Hatake couldn't do the same, even if it isn't perfect 2020 vision, you know? I could draw a bunch of comparisons between Reishi and Chakra, but let's just cut the freaking malarkey, man. We all just want to see these people scrap, you know? If you think Kakashi can't see him and then that's just GG, then congratulations, you win. I'm sure you're the life of every party you've ever been to. I, however want to make this somewhat interesting. Naruto Sensei versus Ichigo Sensei in a neutral environment, one-on-one -on -one with the fate of their entire verse at stake. Who would win? I flipped the coin because I couldn't decide who to start with, and uh, yeah, here we are. Luckily for me though, Kisuke's stats as a fighter remain pretty consistent throughout the story. We never see him like training after leaving Soul Society, right? Just creating new inventions and techniques. So this should be a pretty straightforward thing. In terms of strength, Kisuke's most relevant or overt feats, I guess, come from the Arankar saga, specifically from his battle against one of the Espada, Yami. Using his Zanpak Toe Benihime in only its Shikai form, he was able to completely neutralize Acero from base Yami by outputting the same amount of energy with a similar style attack, effectively canceling it out. This is a blast that Kisuke himself admitted would have been reckless to simply dodge or deflect, implying that it could have been enough to wipe out a huge chunk of Japan, or at least all of Katakura Town where they were. We don't see too many other strength feats directly from Kisuke, mostly because he rarely fights in the main canon of the series, but we do know that he at least possesses Ryatsu worthy of getting himself promoted to captain of squad 12, putting him up there if not superior to other captains from around the time, like Love, Kensei, and Shinji, even after their power multiplies through the holification process. We also know that he was strong enough to be in charge of the detention unit within the Omitsuki Do, one of the three core branches of the military in the Seireite, basically acting as prison warden for a bunch of criminals of all different shapes and sizes, including even a young Mayuri Kurotsuchi, who himself would go on to become captain as well, and even a direct successor to Kisuke in a lot of ways. Kisuke's spiritual pressure was even strong enough to make someone like Ichigo start shaking and sweating. Although, this was before Ichigo had even attained his Bankai, to be fair, when he was still discovering more about his own spiritual pressure. Regardless, after Ukiyora's statements where he's here almost revering Kisuke as one of the few people that pose an actual legitimate threat to him, as well as after seeing all of the performances from each of the visors who were captains around the same time Kisuke were captain against all of the top Espada and even Aizen himself, yeah, I can comfortably say that Kisuke when it comes to raw strength and speed is at least, 
at least on the level of the top three Espada, Resurrection and all. Each of these Espada being able to destroy the entire Las Noches, a country to continental sized dimension with a single set of escortas. But again, comparing him to the top Espada is still a low ball. Did you know that Kisuke managed to actually kill Aizen twice? Technically speaking, at least. Though Aizen did keep his guard down intentionally, allowing Kisuke to do all of this, he did force Aizen to evolve twice with the Hokyoku, once with a succession of high level Kido, and another time with a unique spell of his own that he developed on the fly. Aizen himself admitted that had it not been for the Hokyoku, the battle would have been over just like that. Meaning that Kisuke's Kido combo attack would have easily done away with any of Aizen's subordinates. That includes the Espada, obviously. Aizen at this point hadn't quite reached the level where that famous quote comes up of him saying he surpassed all of the Shinigami in history, but he was quickly approaching that, let's just say, Yamamoto threshold to be able to destroy all of Soul Society. And regardless of any of what I just said, the entire inside of Las Noches that I mentioned before was all just an illusion created by Aizen, which, if you want to highball it, includes a sun off in the distance that obviously was also created by him. Basically, Kisuke scales to Aizen, that's what I'm saying. Going back to Kisuke though, it's time now to talk about his Zanpak toe, and though we see him fight with Kido more often than he does with his sword, Benny Hime does still provide him with great offensive and defensive capabilities. Starting with his attack mode, Kisuke has Nake, an energy blast or energy slash that he can charge whenever he wants, even to the level and past the level of a Sero from the likes of Beige Yami, just as an example. Kamisari is more of a long range style slash, powerful enough to cut through Lupi's Hiero in his Resurrection form, which is basically just the spiritual armor of an Espada meant to replace someone like Grimjow in ranking. They might not be exactly the same in terms of strength, but they're somewhat comparable still. And then he also has Shibari, which is a net made of spiritual energy strong enough to restrain a clone of Squad 2 Captain Soifone, captain of the same squad Kisuke used to train under, which also might sometimes include a follow-up attack which Kisuke names Hiasabi Benihime Jujutsu Nagi, where he then litters the surrounding area with landmines as his opponent is still trapped, creating huge explosions that can wipe out entire sections of Katakura Town. Switching to defense mode, Kisuke also has the Chikisumi no Tate, a shield which has blocked direct strikes from a rage-amped Yami and even earlier versions of the Getsuka Tensho. And he also has Supine, an ability that allows Kisuke to just utterly negate the force of an attack with his sword, that is after analyzing things like muscle movements and the spiritual properties of an attack. And then comes the big enchilada, his Bankai, Kanon Biraki Benihime Aratame. And uh, the simplest way to explain this ability is that anything that it comes into contact with it can reconstruct, even down to a microscopic level, as we've seen Kisuke use his Bankai to modify different aspects of his body as a way to counteract poisons, toxins, or any other environmentally lethal threats, lack of oxygen, etc. From an attack perspective, he can use his Bankai to reinforce his muscles, making his attacks much stronger, as well as just generally being able to modify the environment around him, or even directly dissecting his opponent outright. But the main benefit of Benihime Aratame is obviously in its healing aspect. It's never been explicitly shown, but it has been implied on multiple occasions that Kisuke's been the one to heal Ichigo and his friends back when they got beat up in Katakura Town. And eventually in his battle against Asuka during a thousand year blood war, finally we get to see the true healing capabilities of Kisuke's Anpakuto. If Aizen refers to Kyoka Suigetsu as complete hypnosis, then I guess it's only fair to call Benihime Aratame complete surgery, right? because it can literally heal anything. Moving on to speed now, and yeah, it's pretty easy to deduce that Kisuke is one of the fastest people in the Bleach verse. Again, being a former captain of the Gotei 13 requires a certain level of aptitude in Hoho, an ability involving high speed movement, which most if not all Shinigami use when battling. But even more impressively, he also comes from the stealth force of Soul Society, the Onmitsuki Do, which focuses heavily on speed and agility in combat above anything else, where he spent years sparring constantly with the likes of Yoruichi. The same Yoruichi who is renowned for being the fastest Shunpo user in an organization built around battling with Shunpo. Even while claiming she was out of shape after a hundred years away from the Omitsuki though, Yoruichi could still outmaneuver someone like base Byakuya while also carrying Ichigo on her back. Byakuya being the fastest Shinigami in Soul Society at this time besides maybe Soifone who also prided herself on surpassing Yoruichi like Byakuya did. I'm saying all of this to say that after being her Hoho -Ho and Hakuda training partner all of those years, Kisuke can definitely match Yoruichi in speed, uh, to a certain extent at least. Because of this, 
Kisuke at least has to be about as fast as Byakuya, and this includes after activating his Bankai and even after his training with the Royal Guard during the Thousand Year Blood War, because going off of Yoruichi, she was still shitting on everyone in terms of speed by the end of the series. Obviously, this then pits all three of them above light-based attacks that even lieutenants can dodge like the Nagashion and the Ashvela, and I've talked about this already. He can even somewhat keep up with attacks from Yoruichi in her Raiju Senkei form. Not necessarily from a combat perspective, I won't go that far with it, but at least to be able to follow around Askin's body as it's getting knocked about by all of her attacks, just to explain to him what the transformation When it comes to stamina, I mean, we haven't really seen Kisuke fight continuously for days on end or, or anything like that, but he definitely possesses enough spiritual energy to use multiple keto spells in quick succession without tiring and even various high-level keto spells as well, 80s and above. Though a full incantation may be required, and I'd say only about a few times before the fatigue starts to set in. Even before activating his Bankai in the battle against Askin, he was still able to fight somewhat normally, despite being trapped inside his poisonous gift ball, though obviously with much more strain on his body. However, for as formidable as Benihime Aratame is, it seems as though it definitely takes its toll on Kisuke's Rei Ryoku, and comes with a time limit actually, because only moments after defeating Askin, Kisuke was on the verge of passing out completely, and would have actually died from Askin's post-mortem Nen attack thing had it not been for Neliel's save at the last moment, or at least that's what's being implied here. In conclusion, Kisuke might not have, you know, the raw strength of somebody like Ichigo or Kenpachi, and he might not have the absurd hacks of someone like an Aizen or a Yuhaba, but his battle IQ certainly helps close that gap. He's an incredibly well-rounded fighter, probably the most in the entire Bleach series, and his Bankai is a pretty dope chump card, I'm not gonna lie. Also, no, I'm not touching Can't Fear Your Own World. I still haven't read through all the volumes yet, if I'm being honest, but I did hear that Kisuke knows how to use the Hado number 99 dragons like Aizen did at the end of the series. Honestly, though, it doesn't really change my scaling all that much. I still consider Kisuke to be comparable to Aizen in power, maybe up to, like, second or third evolution, give or take. Are you kidding? Oh, Kakashi. The honorary Uchiha. The same way that humans are like honorary apes. I mean, of course we aren't, but we pretty much are. To me, honestly, he shares a lot in common with Kisuke when it comes to his role as a fighter. Not necessarily being the strongest guy around, you know, but still an overall well-rounded fighter with a mighty high battle IQ. Plenty of tools in his toolbox and a pretty cool trump card, I'm not gonna lie. That being the Mangekyo shotting gun. But first, his power. All of Kakashi's best feats come from the war arc. That didn't take long. At his best, we've seen him duke it out with the likes of the goddess of Shinobi herself, Kaguya Otsutsuki, someone you could scale to as high as universal if you want to. To keep the cancer down to a minimum for this video, let's just say she's powerful enough to create and destroy stars because we can see them with our own eyes and I did give Aizen that benefit of the doubt I guess even though it's not really the same sort of ability but again before we can even get to talking about DMS Kakashi we have to put at least some respect on his name before the Obito buff for taking on Forge and Shuriki at once alongside Six Gates Might Guy. First in their version 2 Chakra Cloak forms a la Four Tails or Six Tails Naruto from earlier on in the series and then even after their full Bijou transformations, he was still duking it out. The Bijou or the Tailed Beast, whichever you want to call them, in the Naruto story have often been portrayed as political sways, I guess, for the five nations with the Land of Fire using Kurama, the Nine Tails, the Land of Wind using Shukaku, the One Tail, and the Land of Lightning using Yuki, the Eight Tails, just as an example, almost in the same exact way various governments in our actual real world leverage nuclear weapons as a means of maintaining a political balance. You don't attack me, I don't attack you type of agreement, or at least that's how it should work in theory. The next 20 years on this planet have me feeling very uneasy. No, I'm not trying to turn this political. Anyways, the reason that this system works in the Naruto world though is because each of the tailed beasts are capable of wiping out an entire nation just by spitting out a couple of Bijou Dama Lugis. How this connects back to Kakashi though is that he and Guy were pretty much fighting two of them apiece in the initial battle against Obito. Fighting one Bijou was good enough for me to consider Kakashi somewhere around that level in power even if it isn't necessarily the strongest Bijou that he's fighting. but. 
fighting two of them at the same time, all of them with attacks capable of damaging KCM-1 Naruto, well, that just cements my opinion. Even more impressively though, Kakashi was pretty much on equal footing with Obito Uchiha in their one-on-one -on -one battle. I know some people might attribute this to the Kurama chakra amp recharge thing that Kakashi received a little while before, but besides a stamina refill, I don't think it really affected this confrontation all that much. This was Obito, the man that was using and abusing all seven of these bijou like they were the hoes and he was the pimp with plans to do the same exact thing with the Eight Tails and Nine Tails. The Nine Tails specifically with the potential to destroy the entire planet over time if left to rampage freely. Throughout the story, Kakashi is revered by various top of the top S-Class ninja like Itachi and Pain, just to name a couple, as a serious threat and once again, the Akatsuki literally collected Bijou like they were Pokemon badges. Even after losing his Sharingan, which consequently meant that Kakashi also lost his Lightning Blade in Kamui, he was still feared as someone with power equal to that of an entire country of Shinobi, by himself. But now we can finally get to Kakashi's true strength here, the Sharingan. Outside of things like being able to read Chakra Flow, having slight precognition, and other anecdotal aspects about the Sharingan that I'll be saving for talking about the breakdown of the battle, I guess, Kakashi can also access an upgraded version of this dojutsu called the Mangekyo Sharingan, which includes this ability named Kamui, a technique that allows Kakashi to warp literally anything into his own separate pocket dimension just by looking directly at it. Eventually, with the help of the spirit of Obito, it's a long story, okay, just roll with it, Kakashi gained a second Sharingan and was able to use Mangekyo as well as Kamui to its full potential. This entails not just being able to summon a full body Body Susano, which can clear away mountain ranges and meteorites with a casual sword slash, infusing his original Kamui warping technique into his other jutsu and generally increasing its utility overall, but also gaining the intangibility that Obito had with his Sharingan, making it so that even while in a full body Susano, he can transport parts of his body to a separate dimension to avoid direct contact with things in the physical world. However, obviously Kakashi acquired this power under very particular circumstances, let's just say that, and it all only lasted for a short period of time until the rest of Obito's chakra faded away. He was already on the same level as various S-Class ninja, Jinchuriki and Kage, all of the strongest people in the verse, to be honest, pre-Otsutsuki, and then Kishimoto gave him a power-up just so he can compete even against the likes of them. It just wasn't really necessary now, was it? But that's... That's not what this video is about. On to Kakashi's speed though, and once again we're looking at the war arc for this because most of his time on the battlefield was spent tag teaming with people like Mike Guy, Naruto, and Minato. Well, hold on. I guess first things first. Kakashi's been using lightning based attacks ever since he was a kid. He managed to directly cut a bolt of lightning before it could reach the ground. He dodged the lightning release attack from Kakuzu earlier on in Shippuden, someone that could challenge the first Hokage. And overall, the form of chakra nature that he's most adept at using is indeed lightning release. If this was Pokemon, Kakashi would probably be an electric type. However, again, Kakashi's greatest speed feats come from the fourth great shinobi war. This man was able to successfully pull off team attacks with Naruto like it was Storm 4 or something, repeatedly warping away Naruto with Kamui as a means to counter Obito's Kamui. Kakashi can't warp something with Kamui unless he looks directly at it, so that means that he has to be at least fast enough to keep pace with KCM2 Naruto in battle. KCM2 Naruto being an amped version of KCM1 Naruto, the same guy that blitzed the Raikage. The Raikage being the leader of this village that uses various light speed techniques, for example the Jutsu that sent him and Tsunade into the middle of war at the speed of light which they were then quick enough to create a surprise attack with and the same Raikage that was the speed rival to Minato in his prime. Being able to match even his flying Raijin Jutsu's teleportation speed if he could correctly predict the location of his reappearance that is. Now I wouldn't say Kakashi can fight at the speed of light because he's primarily a support character during all of these Naruto battles to be honest. Specifically during the battle against Kage he was relegated to just being a spectator for the majority of it. But we do see that his eyes and or reflexes can at least keep up with light speeds because I mean he was still able to see everything that was going on and react to things if they pose an immediate danger to him. DMS Kakashi though can certainly fight at or faster than the speed of light, simply because he scales to Sasuke who scales to Naruto who dodged that light speed attack which nobody has brought up ever. If you're looking for something more uh, evident though, I guess, Kakashi was able to throw Kamui Shuriken at Kaguya's distorted form before it could attack him and on two separate occasions he was able to use Kamui to defend against one of Kaguya's quickest attacks the ash bones, once making himself intangible just before an ash bone could hit him, and once warping away an ash bone before he could strike Naruto in the final sequence. 
though this was an ash bone fired by Zetsu with Kaguya's severed arm to be fair. This Kaguya that Kakashi was fighting against was also continuously getting much stronger and faster from absorbing chakra from the infinite Tsukuyomi, and Naruto was already having a lot of trouble dodging that attack while fighting her when she was still calm. In terms of stamina, Kakashi can fight for at least a few days, as we saw in the war, but you have to put a lot of asterisks next to this feat to be fair. Although he could repeatedly use powerful jutsu like Kamui for example that would have otherwise drained him earlier on in the story after only a few uses, he still wasn't spamming them with every attack right unless he was chakra amped by the nine tails or six paths. Yes, Kakashi still has to budget his chakra and make careful decisions when attacking on how to maximize damage while also minimizing fatigue. In a matchup like him versus Kisuke, he won't have any teammates to rely on for a recharge or an assist. So even though he's managed to use certain jutsu more efficiently in the war arc, there is still a limit on how much chakra he can utilize at one given time. This isn't much of an issue anymore after becoming Hokage and going into Boruto though because he never stopped training in all those years after the war. However, like I said before, the trade-off for the stamina buff was losing his Mangekyo and his Lightning Blade, though the great value Chidori is close enough I guess. Before we get into the battle discussion, just like last video, um, let's take a look at the poll that I put up a couple of weeks ago and see what you guys thought. And the winner is... Yeah, I can't say I didn't see this coming. So basically, this is one of those battles that's going to be more of a chess game than anything else, right? I'm sure most of the fight would just be inner monologue and a bunch of warm-up attacks as Kisuke and Kakashi just spend all of their time trying to figure out how the other's main abilities actually work. You know, trying to finesse some sort of opening in their stratagem because, I mean, Lord knows both of them can have some pretty phenomenal poker faces when facing off against a new opponent. You know, a Byakurai over here from Kisuke, a water bullet or water shark over there from Kakashi, general cat and mouse antics from the both of them, trying to get the other one to make the first mistake. It's basically just going to be this tit for tat exchange showing off all of the different keto and jutsu from both of their respective series for the most part, because damn do they know a lot of them. Where I have to give Kisuke the edge here though is in I think he could figure out Kakashi's tricks way before the other way around could happen. Kisuke is a scientist right that has devoted his life to the study of Reishi in the bleach world. How it flows, how it interacts with life, how to manipulate it etc. And like I said Chakra is not too dissimilar from it. It's literally half physical energy and half spiritual energy, and although it may flow throughout a person's body a little bit differently in the shinobi than Reishi does in souls in the bleach world, there still shouldn't be any issue really with Kisuke developing some sort of spell to outright seal off or at least momentarily halt Kakashi's chakra flow, even while being preoccupied in combat. Now I'm not saying he has the Byakugan or something and can take out each and every one of Kakashi's chakra points with the utmost precision like he's from the Yuga clan, but as we see from the Byakugan's vision, the pathway in which chakra flows in a person is remarkably similar to the cardiovascular system in ordinary humans in the real world, which Kisuke obviously has extensive knowledge of. Not only that, but it's also pretty unlikely that Kisuke would even need to use his trump card. His Bankai will most likely be kept a complete secret from Kakashi unless he runs out of options, and that's unlikely quite frankly because Kakashi wouldn't even be able to begin to work on figuring out a way of countering that without finding ways of dealing with all of Kisuke's other Hado and Bakudo first. I'm thinking like say if Kakashi gets caught in the Sajo Sabaku right he could warp himself away or warp away the actual Bakudo itself before it reaches him we've seen him warp away Jutsu before so you know spiritual based attacks shouldn't really make that much of a difference to the Kamui however first how many times can he really do that before he runs out of chakra? Sajo Sabaku is only one of Kisuke's many types of restraining and sealing spells. You got Hainoa, Gochu Tekan, Rikujo Koro, the list goes on really. And second, all Kisuke needs really is to see the Kamui in action one time to deduce how it works. Not only is he great at reading muscle movements like I said before, almost like he has the Sharingan himself or something, but most of the time when Kakashi fights using his Mangekyo, he has his right eye completely closed. 
You can't tell me that there's no way Kisuke wouldn't be able to figure out the source of the Kamui's power while Kakashi's over here looking like he's trying to get his camera in the focus and shit. I'm sorry man, but for being a ninja, that is probably one of the most obvious tells for an attack in Naruto. It's literally like Kakashi has a bullseye on his face with a sign on it that says, please stab me, I'm OP. Kakashi's fast for sure. He could probably dodge a few attacks and, you know, tie Jutsu it up with Kisuke to keep him from reciting incantations at least, but even in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he has no real advantage, again, because of Kisuke's days in the Omitsuki Do, basically the Anbu of the afterlife. All it really takes is an opportunity window of about a second or two for Kisuke to restrain Kakashi with a Kido spell and, supported by his captain level, Yoruichi level speed scaling be fast enough to stab Kakashi in the eye with Benihime before he could slip away. And once you take away Kakashi's Sharingan, it's pretty much GG from there because Kisuke still has a litany of abilities that he can fight with while Kakashi has lost his only real counter to any of those attacks. Even with the Kamui, Kakashi would have a difficult time handling someone like Kisuke. Maybe he would be able to force a Bankai pop if we give Kakashi that benefit of the doubt and say that he could allocate his chakra well enough to push Kisuke to his absolute limit like that, but certainly without the Sharingan, Kakashi wouldn't stand a chance at all. And honestly, if we're gonna give Kakashi that benefit of saying that he could find some multi-layered pincer plan to force a Bankai out of Kisuke, then we have to also give Kisuke the benefit of saying that he would easily deduce the properties of the Kamui and eliminate it from the equation altogether. Boruto era Kakashi is a little bit of a different situation because he doesn't have such obvious tells like the Sharingan while also becoming stronger, faster, and more resilient, so he could probably give Kisuke more of a challenge when it comes to the contest of Hado versus Ninjutsu and Hakuda versus Taijutsu, but still, I just can't confidently argue that his ninjutsu was on the level of someone like, and I know I said I wasn't going to touch this novel, but I can't just ignore her on the level of someone like Aura's matter manipulation from the Can't Fear Your Own World novel. You know, creating a sea in the sky and dragons made out of lava, all of which Kisuke could deal with, and the Hakuta Taijutsu thing I've already gone over. At best for Kakashi, it's a stalemate in that department. And if I'm being honest, I still don't know how Kakashi escapes being immobilized by the gravitational force of a spell like Kuyo Shibari when he can't use Kamui. I guess he has a larger chakra pool, so more substitutions and clones to spare, I guess, but Kisuke doesn't even need an incantation for that Bakuro spell in particular. It seems as though he can just throw this attack out whenever, so yeah, that's pretty much checkmate. However, because most of you guys and I agreed last time, and I don't just want to make it seem like I'm just going with what my polls say all the time, I will now drop my ultimate hot take. I think DMS Kakashi could defeat Kisuke. Hear me out. Hear me out. All right. What's stopping Kakashi from separating Kisuke from his Zanpak toe? And why do I think that is a win condition, I guess? Allow me to explain. Kaguya was getting exponentially stronger from the infinite Tsukuyomi while she was fighting against Kakashi, and just by using one jutsu, that being Ame no Minaka, which is supported by her yin and yang chakra, she's been portrayed and displayed to be able to create and travel between multiple time spaces. Keep following. Get, stick with me. Controversially, I said that this was something on a level of, if not superior to, the likes of Yuhaba and Power because he was able to destroy a time space as well, that being the Garganta. Following that logic now, DMS Kakashi, who directly fought and in some ways even overpowered this chakra amped version of Kaguya, should be strong enough to warp away somebody like Yuhaba, or at least any member of the Schutzstaffel, putting the Almighty to the side, obviously, with this whole thing. No matter what Kido spell Kisuke uses, free of his chakra limitations from before, Kakashi should be able to spam not just one, but both versions of Kamui for as long as he needs to. Speed should be a non-factor here because Kakashi was able to react to one of Kaguya's fastest attacks, attacks that faster than light six path sage mode Naruto could barely keep up with that have also been chakra amped by the way. Some people might say that because Kisuke is a Shinigami, Kakashi's intangibility shouldn't really matter because most of his attacks are spiritual in nature, and I would agree if Kakashi hadn't also received Yin and Yang Chakra from Obito, who was a Tentail Shinchuriki at one point. Yin release in particular here, as it's pretty much the raw spiritual energy that makes up Chakra. The Reishi of the Naruto verse, if you will, whereas Yang releases more akin to Kishi in the Bleach world because of physical energy and all that, I'm stretching it. What I'm trying to say is, 
Theoretically, if Kakashi infuses Yin Yang release into his Kamui, it should make him intangible to spirits as well, right? This will mean no direct contact between Kakashi and Kisuke, which would remove a lot of the offensive capabilities of Benihime Aratame. Sure, Kisuke's Bankai still has nigh immortal healing abilities, but now, ironically, stamina would be the issue for Kisuke here. In the battle against Asken, we see him using his Bankai for a very short period of time before being on the verge of passing out completely. Sure, you could attribute that to the poison gift ball deluxe that Asken left behind, but according to Asken's assessment, Kisuke certainly didn't have enough energy to keep using his Bankai for an extended period of time. We don't see any stamina problems from Kakashi, however, in the Kaguya battle. After she was defeated, he was still standing on both feet, potentially ready for another threat to emerge, only getting fatigued after obito took his sharingan back so there is still a time limit on dms kakashi i guess almost like him and obito did the fusion dance but it's implied that much more time passed there than in the battle between kisuke and asken i mean come on man kakashi was having a whole conversation with the spirit of hagoromo still dms'd up and all even if you don't want to grant the whole yin release kamui bypasses Ryatsu idea, Benihime Aratame still has a very specific range to it which Kakashi can exploit in the same way that Asken did, only this time in an armored full body Susano with long range time space warping projectiles. And just for the record, we don't see Kisuke using too much Kido after activating his Bankai either, but even something like Hado number 99 could just be warped away by Kakashi in this form if I'm being honest. I'm not saying that Kisuke will be a sitting duck. But Kakashi has much more maneuverability than him, that's for sure. And, I mean, it's been hinted that Kisuke's Bankai can even reconstruct the time space around it. Like, I don't... Uh, we gotta see more of Kisuke's Bankai. It's like the Ichigo's Bankai thing, right? The reason why I took away Ichigo's true Bankai in the Big 3 video last year is because it, we just don't know enough about it. it. You know, it's... Come on, man. It was in a video game. Let's actually flip the intangibility argument on its head and say that Kakashi wouldn't be able to land an attack on Kisuke because, you know, Shinigami are intangible to regular humans in the world of the living. Well, like I brought up before, Kamui can warp away Jutsu and even entire Bijou, which are literally just giant manifestations of chakras, so theoretically it could have also worked on the spirits of Hagoromo or any of the spirits of the previous Kage that we see at the end of the war theoretically at least. But also, like I brought up before, if you're a human in Bleach and you're spiritually aware enough, like most of Ichigo's high school friends, you can definitely see and fight souls, even if you haven't trained for it like Chad and Orihime in the beginning of the series. Not only is Kakashi a natural born prodigy in a world full of superhumans, mostly, but he also has Yang release, which Senjutsu derives from, which at high levels grants the user awareness of beings operating on entirely different planes of existence. I think Kakashi has two win conditions here with DMS. One, he can warp away Kisuke's Zanpakuto with Kamui, which is even easier to do while Bankai is activated because it only makes the target larger. Plus, Kisuke has no way back without any of his gadgets, stuck in a pocket dimension separate from anything in the Bleach verse, especially his laboratory. Or two, Kakashi could abuse any OP ability that he wants to long enough for Kisuke to exhaust his Rei Ryoku and leave himself wide open. I think in most scenarios, Kisuke would decisively win against Kakashi because the entire Bleach verse often has the edge in cross verse battles like this because of the spiritual aspect of it, you know? This is pretty much Kakashi versus Aizen with a different Zanpak toe and without the Hokyoku immortality. For as knowledgeable and as disciplined as Kakashi is when fighting, being a shinobi and all that, Kisuke is basically a shinobi in the Bleach verse. He's a scientist too, which for as wise as Kakashi is, makes me think that only people like Orochimaru or Kabuto can match that level of raw intelligence. Maybe Ishiki too, or Amado. In a regular battle between the two, Kakashi would be constantly on the back foot, and he might pull off one or two cunning moments, you know, I, it's Kakashi, but ultimately Kisuke's arsenal is just too much, man. Again, about as deep as someone like Aizen, if not more so. However, if you make a special case for Kakashi and you throw DMS into the mix and you, you know, shake things up a bit and you do some critical thinking, maybe if Kisuke finds ways to curb the weaknesses in his Bankai, he beats Kakashi on all fronts. But right now, currently, if I'm having this debate on which character is more broken, I'm going with Kakashi Susano over Benihime Aratame. I, I'm sorry, man. The Kamui Susano is pretty much a flawless jutsu. Fry me in the comments, I don't care. If it's, if it's me, I apologize, I'm just high.
so sometimes I'm just imprecise I'm just shy, so I really need to emphasize After this performance, check my vitals, make sure that I'm still alive Cause I give it all, give it all